October is Domestic Violence Month, and a recent high-profile sports case has drawn national attention to this issue. Chief District Court Judge Elizabeth Kiever tells us about the Safe Link Domestic Violence Program in Cumberland County and how it assists victims. She also invites the public to a candlelight vigil on October 23rd. In Cumberland County, we've been working with domestic violence victims for a long time. We had the, one of the first domestic violence programs in the country starting in 1977. In the year about 2000, we implemented the Safe Link Domestic Violence Program, which is designed to assist victims to obtain domestic violence protective orders whenever they have an incident that occurs. It's often connected with criminal cases, but it doesn't have to be. An individual does not have to take out a criminal warrant in order to be eligible for a domestic violence protective order. We need to understand that domestic violence occurs uh, in our community. There is no question about that. It's an issue of power and control. When an individual, whether a male or a female, believes that they are the victim of domestic violence, then they have the right to seek a domestic violence protective order. You can do that in one of two ways. During regular business hours, the domestic violence office is open on the third floor of the Cumberland County Courthouse. That's called the SafeLink program. You go down, they'll have you fill out the necessary paperwork, which really sets out what the most recent incident of domestic violence has been, uh, what your relationship is to the individual, because it does require that you have what we call a personal relationship. You've been married, you're a parent and child, uh, you have a child together, you've lived together, you're in a dating relationship, all of those qualify as a personal relationship. You fill out that paperwork, you're sent in to see a judge in a courtroom. The judge will review the paperwork with you and determine if you're eligible for what we call an emergency order. Some folks don't need an emergency order, so we simply will set your case for a hearing. But if you receive an emergency order, you take that order to the Sheriff's Department for service because basically that order is not valid until it is served on the other party. It's basically we can't bar you from doing something until you know that you've been barred from doing it. So you have to have service, so you have to have an address where that person can be served. You then come back in within 10 days and we have a full hearing to determine if that order should continue in effect. It could continue in effect for 30 days or 90 days, up to one year. There are some provisions that allow custody to be determined as part of that, but that is designed to be a temporary um, order until you can actually file a regular custody case. So it's not designed for if what you're seeking is a custody order and there's not been violence of any kind or threats of any kind, then you don't need a domestic violence protective order. You need to see a lawyer about getting a custody order. Now there's one other type of order, what we call the civil no contact order, and that's if you don't have that personal relationship, but some individual has been stalking you or has committed some type of inappropriate sexual contact with you, then you may be eligible for a civil no contact order. And those are also available through the SafeLink office, and they're also available uh, in the same type of process. If you are, have an incident of domestic violence in the middle of the night and you have to flee for your safety, you can go to the detention center where we, our magistrates are on duty 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and they can issue a domestic violence protective order anytime the courthouse is closed. So you can get access to having protection and we want you to do that. So if you're a victim of domestic violence, it's very important that you recognize that there are resources out there that can assist you. You're not alone. Uh, when you come down to the SafeLink office, they're gonna give you information about ways in which you can access services through the Department of Social Services, which has a domestic violence program and provides treatment and training for individuals. There are also, if you're a member of active duty member of the military, or if you are an act, a dependent of an active duty member, we have Fort Bragg family advocates that are located in the courthouse. We ask when you indicate to us that you have that connection, we're gonna let you talk to that advocate 
and they're going to put you in place to get services that are available through Fort Bragg uh, so that you have those appropriate services. We do have a shelter in Cumberland County. If you need a place to stay, if you don't have a relative that you can go stay with, or if you're afraid to stay in your home. Now, if you get a domestic violence protective order, that's gonna normally give you a chance to remain in that home and the other party not be able to return to that home. But if you're afraid to do that, and some people are, we do have a shelter where you can stay and you can access information about that through the SafeLink office as well. So in addition, many people, are, there are criminal warrants that are issued because domestic violence, assault, communicating threats, those are all crimes that occur. And in addition, if you have a domestic violence protective order and the other party violates that order, that's a criminal offense and you should take out a criminal warrant to ensure that, that punishment is in place and protection is in place. Once you issue that criminal warrant, the, dis the district attorney's office have advocates that can assist you with the court process and the domestic violence program through the Department of Social Services also have, an, have a paralegal advocate that can assist you through that program. So there are folks out there that will help you. Don't feel like you are alone and you can't go forward because we will help you. We know that it's very difficult to leave these situations. Uh, you're often have a great deal of love for this individual, but that's not enough to keep you safe. And so we want you to come in to seek assistance and we have assistance available to you. Remember, this is an issue of power and control. We often hear, well, he just got mad and hit me. Well, the answer to that question is, if he got mad at his boss, he wouldn't hit his boss. He's hitting his wife or his girlfriend or she's hitting her husband or her boyfriend because they think they can get away with it and they think it's a way to control that other person. So just remember, it's not a natural function to have physical confrontations within marriages and within relationships. If you know of a person who is being victimized, the first thing you need to do is be a friend to that person. Let them know that you're available to them help them develop a safety plan. What am I gonna do if this happens again? So if you've got a friend, that's something you can do. If you don't think you know anyone who's a victim of domestic violence, there are a number of ways that you can still help. We collect cell phones at the SafeLink office. You take them down with the charger so that they can be used because every cell phone is required, even if it's not connected to a service, it has to be able to call 911. So for individuals who need that safety, need the ability to make that phone call, we provide that to them when they come through the office. You can also uh, make donations to the Department of Social Services for those women who have to leave their homes with very little objects with them. They may not have toiletries, they may not have clothing, all of those things we can use at, through the domestic violence program at the Department of Social Services. And we have a number of groups, organizations, clubs that will collect those things and make them available to us, and that's very important. The other thing is to attend the domestic violence vigil. We call it Remember My Name. We read the names of all of the individuals, male and female, who have died in the last year as a result of acts of domestic violence across the state. That number is normally somewhere in about 50 to 100. So there's a lot of those individuals. But that's our way of making sure that the public is aware that this is a serious issue. Uh, remember my name, Domestic Violence Vigil. It'll be Thursday, October the 23rd at 530 in front of the Cumberland County Courthouse on the plaza there. Come down, make yourself known, it's, it just gives that recognition to individuals they're not alone, and we want folks to recognize that.